Hey, good morning to you, dear church family, on this beautiful Tuesday morning. And uh, the psalm for the day with our fellowship family here is Psalm the 15th. The 15th psalm, a psalm of David. Five verses, but very encouraging to us this day. And this psalm, just a little interesting tidbit I just discovered this morning earlier, is David asks this same question that he opens up with in Psalm 24, uh, the third and fourth verses there. And Isaiah does likewise in Isaiah 33, 14, 15, 16, right in there also. But in Psalm 15, let me read the, the entirety of this five little verse psalm here to us this morning. Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle? Who may dwell in your holy hill? He who walks uprightly and works righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart. He who does not backbite with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend, in whose eyes a vile person is despised, but he honors those who fear the Lord. He who swears to his own hurt and does not change, he who puts not out his money as usury, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be moved. Just a couple of thoughts of reflection on this. There's five very fairly obvious characteristics about who abides in the tabernacle of the Lord. And just a little reminder before we get to the five characteristics. In verse 1, a little reminder, which I always appreciate and remind myself and attempt to remind yourselves also of this tabernacle living. Peter calls it sojourning and pilgriming. That uh, we're just camping out here on this earth. Our real home, our citizenship, as Paul states, is in heaven. So remember that. Uh, Keep your eyes lifted towards the, the things of above, foremost Jesus Christ. But while we're camping here, while we're tabernacling, uh, these five characteristics of who dwells uprightly is, first of all, is he who walks uprightly, works righteousness. Again, let me just summarize that in strong character, a godly character. That would be the first characteristic, a godly character. Secondly, is about speech. It's, a, it's about speech and conduct. He whose speech is godly, is truthful. The speech is with integrity and the conduct does not confound or confuse the listener or the observer. There, there's, there's integrity between speech and life. And, and then the third characteristic is, who do you honor? Who do you give value to, to, to model after, to consider their life and to, 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 to look at them as we all are. Our nature is we're people watchers. Notice how David says that he, he's watching and he fears those who honor the Lord, who fear the Lord. That's the hero, if you would. It's interesting, this day we, we understandably are admiring as a culture the medical workers and the front line, as they're called, people. And, it, and that's wonderful. But our, our, our heroes, the psalmist here declares that our true heroes are ultimately, whether he works at 7-Eleven or is looking for a job or she's a barista or, or, the, or a, a high official of some sort or in between, do they fear the Lord? That's who we're really to applaud as a believer. And we should really take that seriously because uh, we're all in this battle of spiritual life. Um, so that's interesting there. A very helpful reminder in this day of, of uh, acknowledging heroes. And then another aspect, the fourth one, after character and conduct and, and uh, who you admire or look up as heroes, is integrity integrity he who swears to his own hurt and does not change the integrity of a person i you've heard me speak very admirably about my father who my earthly father who you'll meet in he heaven <clears throat> who was known <clears throat> pardon me for his integrity what a hallmark 
uh, being at his memorial services oh, about 28 years ago now or his memorial service and hearing those who were under his charge speak of Mr. Corson's integrity. And uh, what a great example uh, 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 of uh, integrity. And we should attempt to follow those and that characteristic. And then finally, the use of money. The use of money. And this is a interesting one as we uh, Americans, we live in the most affluent of all cultures um, at all times. And the use of our money ought to reflect godliness. So five things, just a reminder of these things, our character, our conduct, our, who we admire, who we hero, if you would, integrity, and use of money. The psalmist concludes at the end of verse five, he who does these things shall never be moved. Now, Here's what even gets better. We're to, we're to set our, 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 our goals high to uh, walk in these ways. But we will stumble and bumble and fail at times. There's one who we can count on to always fix our eyes on, to model after, who succeeded 100%. Not 99.9, .9, but 100%. He who does these things shall never be moved. There's only one who's done these things absolutely flawless. It's the one who went to the cross for us. It's the one who is never moved. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13 declares who that is. It's Jesus. He's the one who did these things, and that's why he could go to the cross and robe us in his righteousness. So a reminder to live godly, to walk in his ways, you're a pilgrim, and I'm a pilgrim and a sojourner here on earth. We're camping out. Fix your eyes on him, and he did these things perfectly. Walk with him. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this wonderful little, in terms of number of words, but powerful psalm to remind us that you are the one who did these things. We, we never can fully succeed. We'll stumble a time or two or often, even this day but you did these things, is that we're justified by you, Lord. We're justified by you. You're the one. You're the one who did these things, and you've allowed us to be robed in that righteousness. You took our sins on the cross. May you be glorified and magnified these, this day and our days by us walking in these ways. We just pray these things, ask blessing on one another, and, and just thank you for your, your goodness to us, provision for us, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you, church family, and uh, fix your eyes on him, and may this be a glorious, godly day for you. Amen. <laughs>